Hi, Colin. Hi. How are you? We go to Sydney World. <laughs> Good. That's what we like to hear. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Fallen Kingdom. Yeah. Can you, uh, for those who haven't seen the film yet, give us a little recap as to where we find ourselves after the first film? Uh, well, we, we find ourselves in a world that has a, uh, an, a moral question that they're faced with, which is... Uh, the, you know, the island of Isla Nublar uh, has a volcanic event that is going to kill off all of the dinosaurs on the planet. Uh, and we have to make a choice as to whether we uh, let them uh, meet their fate or whether we save them. Come on. Okay. Are you okay? I'm okay. Um, and obviously Jurassic Park has happened in Jurassic World universe. Um, so I kind of want to assume that the events of Lost World have happened as well. Sure. So uh, do the people ever learn? <laughs> it's a good question. Well, you know, what we really want, I like your pin, by the way. Thank I just you. recognize what that looks like. <laughs> uh, you know, what we wanted to do is, is try to move the franchise uh, into a place where we no longer would have to answer the question, do people ever learn? Where people have no choice <laughs> yeah. anymore. Uh, and that's really what this film was about. This is the last time that we're going to have to convince anyone to go to an island full of dinosaurs. Because uh, uh, in, in the world of screenwriting, that is one of the hardest things to do. Uh, we, we like the answer that we found, and, and we, we feel like it's, it's grounded in, in a much more uh, globally relevant idea that uh, you know there are animals that are in danger based on choices that we've made, and do we have a responsibility to them? It felt uh, a little bit more uh, emotionally. Uh, resonant and believable, uh, but uh, the film travels to a very different place. Uh, mm. And by the time you reach the end, uh, the equilibrium on the planet has changed, uh, and the the characters uh, have uh, completely uh, evolved to a new place in, in their own relationship with the animals and with each other. And that's what I think a second film really needs to do. And in a lot of ways, it's the most important of the three films because it has to make a case for why there's going to be three. And was that your intention when you were writing the first one? Did you kind of see it going down that path? Uh, I hoped. I mean, I didn't know if we were going to ever get to make another one. Uh, you know, it was Jurassic Park four, and <laughs> you know, the inter We didn't know if the interest was that high, and uh, so you know, we made something that I, I thought could stand on its own as a movie. Uh, but if we were given the opportunity to continue it, I, I had a set of ideas along with Derek Connolly, with my co-writer, of, of where we would want to go, and and uh, it, it did very well. And so we, we got a chance to make more. Hey, girl, you think what I'm thinking? Genetic power has now been unleashed. You can't put it back in the box. For me, um, as a massive fan of the Jurassic films, in case you hadn't guessed, um, there are those iconic moments where the theme tune hits in. You have a T-Rex on your arm. I do, yeah. Right on. <laughs> Um, with the iconic theme tune on that T-Rex roar, for me, mm -hmm. gives me goosebumps. Yeah. Um, what moments from this film did you watch back and just think, wow? Uh, I don't want to give it away, but there is a moment, I feel like the way that, uh, that we treat the destruction of the island uh, and the last moment when we, when we leave the island behind, I think is, is, uh, is handled with, with great reverence, both uh, in, not just in what we wrote, but really in the way that, that Bayona uh, visualized it. Uh, it's very emotional. Uh, it's very spiritual, and and I f I find the island to be a character, and so we treated it as if we were we were killing off a major character, uh, and uh, with with every bit of, of emotion that would be attached to that, and and that moment I, I find to be uh, extremely powerful. These creatures were here before us, and if we're not careful. They're gonna be here after. At um, Cineworld, I don't know if you know, we have um, 4DX exclusive in the UK. Uh, have you been to a 4DX screening? I have, not in the UK, but I've been, to, it's, okay. I've been to one before. So for our audience who are gonna go and enjoy Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom in 4DX, what scene do you think is gonna be the most epic in 4DX? I don't know how they're going to deal with submerging the characters underwater. I don't know if you're going to actually <laughs> do that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, look, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of rumbling in this movie. We have a volcano, so there's probably going to be a lot of, of uh, seat shaking that's going to go on. <laughs> I'm just remembering my own experience. Uh, I don't know if you have heat uh, or wind, but there'll yep. be a lot of that. Um, it might be the most 4DX friendly movie ever made. 
I, I think I could fairly say that. When you're dealing with a volcano, I'm not just being nice. It, it very well may be. <laughs> Welcome to Jurassic World.